all of magnetic fields in galaxies and clusters of galaxies. After the Big Bang, the universe went through a period that is referred to as the Dark Ages. One of the most exciting discoveries that astronomers are hoping to make with LOFAR is to find an answer to the question. How did the first stars and galaxies form that turned on the light in the universe? But we also know that new instruments lead to new and unexpected discoveries. So perhaps most eagerly awaited are the results we haven't yet thought about. Early on in the project, it was realized that other sensors could also be attached to the LOFAR network and the powerful central computer that processes the signals. Contacts with geophysicists led to plans to add geophones and infrasound sensors to the network. The geophones will be used to study seismic activity resulting from the production of gas from reservoirs in the north of the Netherlands. The infrasound sensors measure small changes in air pressure which can be caused by volcanoes, large explosions or planes breaking the sound barrier. Infrasound monitoring is also one of the verification techniques for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. The idea of distributed sensors with central processing of the data was also taken up by agricultural scientists. As part of the LOFAR project, they have investigated how these concepts can be used in farming. The focus has been on developing new techniques that can help prevent disease, promote animal welfare and provide support to the farmer in deciding on when to use fertilizers and pesticides. Every second, LOFAR's antennas produce nearly 10 terabits of data, equivalent to 265 full DVDs. Much of LOFAR is therefore only possible thanks to the latest achievements in information and communication technology. An IBM Blue Gene supercomputer, originally developed for massively parallel computations of biological processes, forms the digital heart of LOFAR. The Blue Gene concept was especially adapted for LOFAR's streaming data concept. After initial processing, the data is exported and archived in Groningen, Amsterdam and Ulich in Germany. Through collaborations with the Big Grid and Target projects, a distributed archive is being set up. With data rates approaching those of CERN's Large Hadron Collider and unique and time-variable access patterns dictated by the scientific users, LOFAR is leading the way as an operational e-science infrastructure. LOFAR stations are not just being built in the Netherlands. They can also be found in Germany, France, the United Kingdom and Sweden. Possibly more in the future. Each country has gathered its own funds to pay for the construction and operation of their stations. All signals are also sent through fibers to the same central processing facility in Groningen and combined with data from the Dutch stations. Just as in the Netherlands, astronomers in these countries have ambitious plans for unique observations that will be possible with LOFAR. To make LOFAR a truly European instrument, the Netherlands and its partners are to take joint responsibility for the operation of the International LOFAR Telescope. Sensing the universe, the Earth, and our surroundings.